Welcome back to Showreel. We're currently interviewing the talented Andy Pham. Now, Andy, what are you up to at the moment? What's um, your recent currently year Currently, I'm working on an uh, independent film as the assistant director, producer, and actor for it. Nice. What's the film called? It's called The Alliance. It's a crime film based here in Brisbane. Kind of talking about like the underworld that exists there that no one really knows about. It does not exist. There is no underworld. Yeah, that's exactly the way you should say. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, like it's kind of like um, a f my first feature film. Because a big factor of what a lot of the stuff I've done is m a lot of it's been theatre. Mm -hmm. Or like kind of like dance. So it's not something necessarily that you would use in film. Unless I'm doing a dance film. Which would be awesome. Something like Step Up 7. Oh, like Step Up 17. <laughs> yeah. <a> <laughs> Um, but yeah, like it's um, it's kind of like based here. Originally, the idea was kind of having like, uh, kind of like a child, like kind of like a youth mafia. So like, obviously there wouldn't be actually like adults in this film. So that way we can get younger actors in, give them a lot more opportunities. And this film would be kind of like organized crime by the youth of like Brisbane, and they were the ones in charge of it. And each like kind of like um, stereotype that you often see like would actually have a purpose. Yeah. Right. So like a lot of the kids that are in the city, they're going to be like spies. So they gain yeah. information from like corporate bodies or like they spy on other people during like the day. So it's kind of really so, interesting. So they're serious criminals, not like kitty criminals. Yeah, like, like they stealing are, candy like, imagine and stuff. Like imagine kind of like serious criminals, just younger. Yeah, like okay. a, a fair bit younger. It's actually quite gritty, the film. Sure, they watched like, a lot of CSI growing yeah, up and they yeah, know the tricks know. and, and how to avoid... And they actually try to go out of their way to like really cause... Like, essentially cause mayhem, but yeah. actually make money out of it. Yeah, okay, cool. And early in the year, I was in a production company where I was a singer, actor, and dancer for... And also choreographer. That choreographer for... And it was just a lot of fun. And we organized, like, a variety show where we did a whole bunch of, like, you know... Like, we did, like, stuff from, like, shows that we know of and people know well. And also, like, pieces that we created ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that was a lot of fun. And, yeah, so... And also, as an event manager... I get involved in all these projects a lot, so I would get like moments when I could be like a project manager for like uh, one thing where I'm just like taking care of like volunteers or something. Or like at the end of last year, I was actually involved in the Asia Pacific Screening Awards, and it's like a really big project. And uh, Queensland is actually really like Brisbane City Marketing is a big thing. They're hosting it, and the Brisbane Council is actually helping it out as well. Awesome. Mm. So it's like an international event and I get involved as like the event manager or like helping out with like extra bits that the other actual proper event manager or the ones in charge of it actually mm. take care of. Yeah. How long have you been doing event management for? Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> long time. Um, I started off like at TAFE. So that, I did that for about two years. And then I, I transferred into uni and did that for two years. Where did you study? Like um, TAFE um, and uni? Uh, South Bank TAFE is where I studied, where I got my diploma. And then I got my business degree majoring in event management at Griffith University. So it was a lot of fun. Very nice. How long did you, have you spent studying all up? All up? I spent a bit of a weird period of just doing stuff I just didn't like. <laughs> yeah, okay, you know, like Because I was like, I might as well study. And I did accounting and I hated it. Just sitting in a grey room typing mm. numbers was depressing. Mm. We so, all do things that we don't like. Uh, so. And I did that for two years, two painful years. Oh. So I spent all up studying event management over like four years. Okay, cool. It's been really good. Yeah, God. Have you got anything planned for the future after um, your feature? Uh, apart from world domination. Uh, <laughs> um, what do you think? I, I, well, there's a lot of ideas, like, like especially with like media like this, it's like there's a lot of different avenues. So we can go into like, you know, I, can, like, I was thinking about like a panel show or... Even going to like get involved in more films or theatre or just work on everything else, you know, yeah. like all the other event management stuff within the arts is probably a good idea as well. So do you prioritise one of your threats, so to speak, more than the others? Um, or do you go through phases or cycles of liking <laughs> one thing in De particular? I definitely go through phases. Yeah. I definitely go through phases. Like sometimes I focus on dancing yeah. and it's not so much singing. Like when I did a flash mob back in 2011, it was just all dance and all yeah. choreography. I didn't really worry about much about acting or um, singing because it had no purpose. So like it, it obviously like it's very circumstantial. Mm. And then like certain times I just I sing a lot, like borderline irritating a lot. <laughs> like I wake up like good morning <laughs> and my family's like, Oh, shut up, we we're too early. And it's just a lot of fun. So like 
all of it's kind of like it just kind of fits in my character normally it's kind of yeah. like before it was like I take a conscious effort to do it now it's just naturally who I have yeah <laughs> it's just going to be a problem when you start just delivering sentences while singing oh no can you imagine how irritating that would be yeah just how imagine are you like today hilarious. I have terrible stomach ache. unless you actually get the background music to go along with it I just have a band follow yeah me exactly everywhere. that would be awesome fun <laughs> Yeah. It'll make everything mundane It'll amazing. It'll make contextual. You're not just singing out of the blue. You're singing because there's a brilliant band behind you. Yeah, I, I can understand that mentality. See? I think that's something everyone needs to have. Yeah. Just yeah. a band to follow them. Yeah. Just having their own kind of theme music allowing you to walk down the road. All, all that one guy, like from back in the 19, like, you know, like, oh God, 1950s, how he just has like a drum on his back, like, yeah. a, like <laughs> harmonica, harmonica a horn, everything. Yeah, just that yeah. one guy could just be the whole band. You've yeah. got to be careful because you might start in... You might end up like 500 days that summer, you know, just that whole musical montage in your life. I think people would not want to be my friends anymore. I think family <laughs> would disown me, and I think just people would just have like a wide berth, like, oh, that's a singing guy. <laughs> uh, and then other people who are obviously just as crazy as I am, are like, oh my god, it's a singing guy! <laughs> it's a great different reaction. Is there any other, um, I guess, creative avenues that you'd like to go down? Like, you were saying you wanted to host um, a panel show. Are you interested in things like writing as well? Or um, is that something you want to leave to the professionals? Oh, it's, oh, it's actually a hobby. <laughs> really? I, 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 I do this thing how, like, every year I try to take up a new skill or, like, try to work on a new project, and writing is actually one of them. So I'm trying to write a fantasy book, which is not going quickly. It's, mm. really, it's, like, it's like writer's block that's gone for, like, a few months. Yeah. And it, those few months are just filled in with just, like, winter food. So I think it's a good way of way, like you know procrastinating writing a book of food. Yeah. Fantasy certainly seems to be the kind of in vogue thing. Mm. At the it's, it has mm. a lot of avenues of just creating your own world. I think just having that mentality makes it a lot more fun. Mm. Just like and also trying to understand all the intrinsic factors of like that whole world. Like how does the government work, or like does this affect the world or anything else? Mm. Fair enough. Mm. <laughs> I've uh, also been in a similar boat. I've had a bunch of sh fantasy short stories or stories, novels that I've started over the years. See, I get still... excited when someone says this. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, okay, what's your story about? Yeah. And then you find similarities <laughs> and you're like, tell me more. Yeah. Just, just, I just want to spend a whole day just doing nothing apart from just conversing yeah. about like, like fantasy or just ideas. That I've had many about. conversations like this and then the sun comes up and I realize that I've been doing this for six hours. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to go to another break now, but stay tuned. <laughs>